Hey everyone, this is Dr. Meyer here with a video on the predominant chords 2, 2, 6, and 4. In the past few videos, we have learned about expansions of 1 and 5. And in this lesson, we're going to add 4, 2, 6, and 2 to our repertoire. These three chords are chords that can lead to 5. We call this group of chords predominant because they come before the dominant, or 5. They are sometimes also called intermediate harmonies. This group of chords is an important and colorful group, which you will study at length over the next few semesters. Listen to this Beethoven and take note of each time the V chord is approached by a predominant chord. The most common predominant chords are 4 and 2, 6, and have scale degree 4 in the bass, which is connected by a stepwise motion to the 5 chord. The less common root position 2 chord has scale degree 2 in the bass, which has a fifth relation with the 5 chord. In our example, if E moves down a fifth, it will reach A. Remember that the fifth relationship is very important in tonal music. Predominant chords work the same in minor, but it would be very rare to see a diminished chord built on two. Uh, you almost always will see it in first inversion. So two, two, six, and four elaborate five in a similar way to how five and five, six elaborate one as in our 1-5-1 one, one progression. So we can now expand that progression to 1-4-5-1 one, one, or 1-2-5-1. One, one. We can refer to each of the chords in this progression in terms of their harmonic function, that is, a chord's position in a circuit around a tonic. Harmonic function is associated with a chord's scale degree root, regardless of the inversion that it appears in. There are three main harmonic functions into which we can place the chords we already know. They are tonic, predominant, and dominant. We already know that 1 falls under the tonic distinction. We also know that 5 is a dominant chord, but also that 7 diminished will fall under the dominant function. Now we can add a third set of chords under predominant, that is 2 and 4. These functions will always occur in a certain order as outlined above as tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic in that order. Like language, this cycle has a flow, but also sense in that you need to have certain words in a certain order to make sense. It's helpful to think of harmonic function like a sandwich, where the tonic harmonies are the bread and the outer framework. The dominant is the meat, or the substance, creating contrast between the breads. Now we can have a meat and bread sandwich and make it through, but often we like to add more interest in our sandwich, so we can think of predominant like a cheese, which is optional, but sticks to the meat and makes our sandwich a little more savory. Finally, we can think of tonic expansion as more optional toppings, but also which add heft to our sandwich. So viewing the sandwich from the bottom up, a typical cycle of harmonic function will go tonic, optional tonic expansion, optional predominant, dominant, and then tonic. The harmonic cycle often frames a phrase, leading to some type of cadence. Let's return to the Beethoven we heard earlier um, and look at some of the chords, the other chords in the phrase. Here are the main harmonies in the framework. But looking closer, you can see how a tonic expansion in the first few bars leads to a predominant on four in the fourth measure, where scale degree four is a neighbor tone to scale degree five, or G in the bass. The contrary motion in the voices adds to the predominant intensification of the dominant. Here our phrase ends on a half cadence. 
So the cycle is not quite one complete iteration within this phrase. Notice that the predominant 2, 6 is part of the tonic expansion, just like we have seen with 7 diminished 6 and inversions of 5, 7 in other examples. Listen once more to the example and follow along with the analysis, trying to hum the baseline if you can. Here's another example of predominance in action. Listen to this Schubert Echosis in A flat major and see if you can identify where the predominant chords occur. The harmonies in the first system are very straightforward, with their alternation between 1 and 5-7. The second system features a repetition of a 4-bar idea, where the tonic-predominant-dominant tonic cycle is played out twice. We can see that 2-6 is used here because of the D-flat in the bass line, which is the lowest sounding pitch uh, of that measure. Listen once more and follow along with the bass line. One final example in minor comes from Handel's Messiah. This example is in C minor and is found at the end of the piece. Now there are four voice parts in the recording, but you only see the bass part here in your score. It's best to follow along with the piano reduction. Here's what it sounds like. Here we have the outer framework of the harmonic cycle, ending in a perfect authentic cadence. The predominant chord, 2 diminished 6, moves to 5, 4, 3 while harmonizing scale degree 4 as an incomplete neighbor tone to scale degree 3 in the bass. Listen once more and try to hum along with the bass line. It goes by pretty quickly. In this video we learned three new chords, 2, 6, and 4, and 2, that function as predominant harmonies which lead to 5. Predominant chords are part of a particular cycle of harmonic function, which we can think of as a hefty sandwich of tonic, predominant, dominant, and then tonic, which often frame an entire phrase and lead to a cadence. An important takeaway from this lesson is that harmonic function is associated with scale degree root and will almost always be found in the prescribed place in the cycle that we have discussed here. That is all for now. Thanks for watching.